This is the Scrap Metal Commodities Recycling Report by Ben Lee and Raleigh and Golds for Recycling, November 14, 2016. Last week, commodity prices rose and Wall Street hit record highs as plans began to invest hundreds of billions of dollars in U.S. infrastructure, bridges, roads, and water systems. U.S. steel production rose slightly to the highest level in a few weeks on limited increase in demand. OPEC oil production hit a new high last month as they used their low production cost to gain market share against the U.S., Canada, and Russia. This caused oil to fall to $43 a barrel, down 2.2% for the week, and down a big 14% for the month. Lower prices continue to help consumers and businesses, but keep a limit on the increase in U.S. jobs as it relates to oil drilling, including steel and scrap metal. The oil rig count rose 2 to 452 as oil remains above $40 a barrel. Rigs are up a huge 43% from January's 316 low, but still down an enormous 72% from two years ago. Iron ore rose a huge 24% for the week to $80 a metric ton. It's now up a staggering 41% for the month and 53% for the year, which should bring higher finished goods and scrap steel prices. It will also hurt the profitability of scrap metal substitutes, again helping scrap metal prices. Scrap ferrous prices held steady after their recent rise as U.S. demand remains fair and export demand remains good. Higher iron ore prices will support higher scrap prices, but short term there is little increase in demand to, to cause higher scrap prices. Hot row coil steel is steady at 546 in this graph, but with a new round of increases last week, we'll see prices up about $50 a ton next week on this graph. And that's partly because of the major increase in iron ore and scrap prices. Stainless 304 remains steady, but we're seeing increase of more than a penny in the market, and that should be reflected on this chart next week. Copper rose an enormous 27 cents, ending at 252, and early Friday it was actually at 270. 27 cents is the largest weekly increase in five years. And to be clear, this was not based on increase in demand or reduced supply. It's based on pure speculation, based on the planning that has begun for enormous spending on U.S. infrastructure in the months to come. The five-year copper chart shows that we are now at the highest price in about 15 months. Aluminum rose a penny to 79.1 cents, up about 21% in the last 11 months. Unlike copper, which rose on speculation, aluminum has been rising on demand increases and increased in production costs. And we now see that aluminum inventories remain near about seven-year lows, which means continued upward pressure on aluminum prices. Low scrap metal volumes and margin pressure has led to the announced closing of two more shredders in the southeast. This remains part of the needed industry consolidation due to overinvestment in the past eight years. The U.S. trade deficit came down in September to the lowest gap in over a year and a half. Looking at the middle of this chart, you see it's almost the best number since the crash of 08 when money s- slowed leaving the country due to our economy actually went into free fall and we dramatically reduced the buying of foreign oil, which also dropped in price. The higher the line on this graph means the less money flowing out of the United States. Americans filing for jobless claims fell to 254,000, the lowest level in four weeks. More importantly, though, the claims have been below 300,000 for 88 weeks in a row. This is the longest streak since 1970, 46 years ago, a great direction for the job markets. And with that, we hope all have a safe and profitable week.